It's pretty rare in a game of chess to be able to surprise your opponent as early as the second move, but that's what this video is all about. The Vienna System and the Vienna Gambit, an opening that I'm extremely fond of and excited to share with all of you. Doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or even an advanced player, I'm talking 2000 plus, because in this video I'm going into the general ideas, but I'm also going to give you the specific theoretical moves and two points. Uh, I'm going to put the PGN in the description, you can copy it into any chess engine, and you should stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you the exact statistical breakdown of how strong this opening really is and how to use an openings database. Alright, let's learn the Vienna. So, we have uh, to start the game with the moves e4, e5, and now knight to c3, okay? In general terms, if you're an e4 player, uh, you are going to face e5 a lot, especially at the beginner level, but even as you climb the rating ladder. So you play knight c3, and the point is that in a lot of our positions, we're going to play the move f4 before we move the knight to f3. In fact, in just about every position. So first things first, we're going to start with the Vienna Gambit, because everybody wants to know what that is. The Vienna Gambit is played after the move knight to f6, okay? and we go f4. It's not really a gambit, uh, because it cannot be accepted. It can't be accepted, because if they take it, uh, we push, and now their knight cannot move forward. It has to retreat, and now we have to cover queen h4 check, so we play knight f3. Uh, here, black can play something like d6. This is actually the best thing that black can do to fight back against our center. We'll reinforce the center, and the computer-backed idea that I like the most here is you know, pretty straightforward. It's if they take, I actually play queen e2. I pin the pawn to the king, uh, and black's best move here is bishop out. And after something like this, we have a huge lead in development. We've regained our pawns. We are ready to castle queenside. Uh, but there's a lot of ways that you can play this. Just know that accepting the gambit is more or less losing for black. Uh, you can play d4, you can put your bishop out to c4, you can castle, you'll have an overwhelming lead in material uh, out already on the board, and as long as you don't allow queen h4 check, you should be in very good shape. Uh, the second thing to note is that declining the gambit is possible, but you have to do it with d6. If black plays knight c6, black is essentially losing already after f5, knight e5, and d4. Now it's like a Halloween gambit, but we haven't sacrificed the knight. Uh, and now if black plays like knight g6, for example, uh, we have e5. And now the knight has to go back to g8, and we have the same position except we're not even down a pawn. So d6, we can play a variety of things. I like bishop out, d e5, and not even recapturing, but rather castling with a threat of discovered check. Uh, well, well, sacrificing the bishop with discovered check. So like pawn takes d4, for example, uh, you have bishop f7, you even have this. Uh, and this is just losing for black. Uh, if they take here, uh, we have bishop f7, king e7, rook e1, uh, and it, I mean, it's, it's, it's mate in a few moves, but more importantly, you're, you're going to win this queen. <laughs> it's, it's very bad. So black cannot decline the gambit. Uh, black has to uh, decline with the pawn if they're going to decline. And here it's very straightforward. Now if we bring the knight... And in this particular case, I like to pin the knight to the king, like this, play d3, we'll take at some point, like when they attack us, that's when we'll take, uh, but then we will castle, we will, we will open up the f file, and this position is very good, long term, we want to put pressure on this, we want to use the open f file once we castle, and the rook will be open on this side of the board, but declining the gambit you will get a lot of positions where they do decline the gambit, but in general, if you bring your bishop out to c4 or b5, then play d3 to not block this guy in, you'll be more than okay. Which brings me to the main line of the Vienna Gambit, which is d5. Uh, if you get an opponent that plays this, they know what they're doing, or they got lucky. So if this happens, you take on e5, obviously, because... Uh, you're going to attack the knight, which is another reason why if, if they don't know what they're doing, there's a high chance they don't play this, because a lot of people don't want to lose this pawn. Now they play knight takes e4, and here, if you look in the database, there are two moves which are main, and my move, which is in my openings course on e4, 
Uh, the move queen to f3. This is the third most popular move, but I like it the most because it's the most direct. Now, knight f3 is considered the main line, but I don't like it because black can do a million different things. Black can play bishop e7, black can play bishop g4, bishop e6, bishop c5. It, it, there's too much. And d3 is a very trappy system. So if they're going to play knight c3, bc3, uh, this can kind of transpose to what we want. But here black has a good move d4. Uh, you can play d3 and then you can play like knight f3, d4, bishop out, castle, and so on. But really what you're going for here is the queen h4 trap. It looks like you've made a horrible blunder. I mean, you have if you blunder checkmate, but you have to play g3. They will take, and now you play knight out hitting their queen. You can't take this because they would take your rook. So most people here will drop back thinking that they're maintaining this pin and they can't take because their queen was under attack. But now you ignore this entirely and you play knight to b5. And knight b5 threatens this. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, not, not knight to b5. Absolute brain fart. Please erase that from your memory. But that's why I, I filmed this in one take. Oof. Knight takes d5. You would take the pawn. Take the pawn and threaten knight c7. Um, I don't, I don't even have any idea why I suggested the move knight b5. Please excuse me. You would take the pawn in the center, you would threaten this fork. Now, they can take your rook and hang the rook themselves. Uh, if they do that, then, well, the position is very chaotic. Some people might not like that. They might play like knight a6, for example, which would defend the pawn and continue this. But that's a huge mistake because now you have knight to f4, and you attack their queen, their queen now has a lot of difficulty staying on this side. If they play queen h6, you have a very nasty move, knight back to e2 with discovered attack on the queen, and the knight is under attack. <laughs> so again, this is very trappy. Uh, th this is not like something that you, you can expect to happen every single time. And again, it's not my main recommendation because a good player will just take the knight, continue their development. Which leads me to the main line, and that is queen to f3. We gotta go through the forest, I wanted to show you all the stuff that probably will happen, uh, because honestly at the lower levels you don't get the main line a lot, people will mess up earlier in the game. So, queen to f3 attacks the knight. Now black has three moves here, the one you're gonna face the most is here, uh, then knight c6 and f5 are the probably the two best which are played the least, but at my level, I get them all the time. GMs and IMs are playing these moves all the time. So if knight takes c3, you, I recommend you take with the b-pawn because I want you to rebuild the center with a move like d4. You can take with the d-pawn, and your goal then would be to play like bishop f4 and long castle, something like this, to put pressure on this pawn, maybe with b even something like bishop c4, because that would result in the pin on the queen, uh, this knight can develop with knight h3 and even knight g5 if there's a bishop here, uh, or you can bring it out this way, sometimes to f4, but in this case there's a bishop there. So I like bc3, and after bc3, a lot of games will go like this. They will, black will play bishop e7, black can do a lot of things, I mean black can play c5. Uh, if black plays c5, I don't recommend that you go d4, but if black plays bishop e7, I recommend immediately taking the full center, playing bishop to d3, and bishop e6, knight e2, something like this, and castling, and then long-term creating an attack on this side of the board if black castles. If black is very fast with the move c5, for example, then bishop d3 is still fine because this doesn't trap you. You always have the bishop here, and then this is just a trade and it's completely okay for you. This is not something that you need to worry about. But if black plays c5 here, you can't play d4, because after take, take, they will hit you with this move, uh, and you, you have a bit of a problem. Um, you, you're gonna have some serious difficulty defending your pawns. So if they play c5 right away, I say, all right, punish them for not moving this bishop. Queen to g3, it's my favorite move. Very tricky to remember, because now they can't develop. And some people here will freak out a little bit. They'll be like, uh, well, what about g6? Well, now you're going to develop your pieces. So you're going to play knight out to f3. Uh, this bishop has a choice. It can pin the knight once it arrives on c6 and trade itself. Uh, or if the bishop comes to f5, you can even offer a trade like this. 
because again, long term, you want the open F file. You, you don't care about your doubled pawns in the center because you get an open file here, you get an open file on the F file in the long run, uh, and you have a very strong pawn in the center of the board. So that's as far as if they take on c3, you have to deal with c5 or not c5 positions. Uh, the other two lines to know are knight c6, we'll start with this one, and f5. Versus knight c6 attacking this, don't take the knight, you need to pin the knight to the king to prevent it from capturing. And now what's considered the main line is black takes on c3, now you should take with the d-pawn because you need to open up your bishop and get developed quickly. Um, bc3 is again an option here, but I'm not, I'm actually not a big fan of it. So that's the hardest part here. It's remembering when you take with which pawn, and you can really break that down like a little checklist. Has my opponent played knight c3 first? Or has he played knight c6? Or did he play f5? And so on. So I like this, and now the main line goes check and queen e4. This is a very common maneuver, uh, to trade the queens and get an equal position. Again, if they don't know the theory, you will never face this, ever. It's much more likely that you will face something like bishop e7 or bishop e6, at which point you should remember your ideas, bishop out, long castle, bringing the knight to the center, and noticing what in the position you can put pressure on and how you can attack black's pieces depending on how they set up. So, uh, if they go for this queen trade variation for the more advanced players, there's a cool sacrificial idea, bishop e3. If they take your pawn, you can sacrifice all of the queenside pieces and castle, uh, and now you are threatening this. And if people take your bishop, then you have this, this, and not bishop g5 yet, but a gorgeous move, knight d4. The point is that you attack both of these pieces, and if they take you, you have bishop g5, and it's unstoppable checkmate on e7. So a very cool little trap there. You can play bishop to e3, and of course, if they trade queens, well, life goes on. You'll castle queenside and you'll move on with your, with your existence. If they play f5 in the main line of the Vienna Gambit, I recommend attacking the knight. Now going like this. And here is the trickiest system. If black knows the move d4, uh, well, they know what they're doing. If not, then you're going to go d4. But d4, I recommend sacrificing this pawn entirely. Queen to g3. If they take... The point is bishop to e2, threatening bishop to h5. You might say, well, Levy, how's that a threat? Bishop h5 doesn't look so scary. Well, yeah, but you're going to sacrifice. That's the point. And now you're bringing in your bishop. You're bringing in the pawn. And black actually can't defend himself. So if king e7, you have this. If king here, you have e6. And it's simply losing. The king has to come forward and you'll have a discovered attack on the queen. And if this, again, bishop to g5. Devastating attack. Um, so, bishop to e2, uh, and if black plays something like g6, you can go bishop f3, knight e2, and castle. Remember this little bishop e2 trick. It's going to be very useful for you. And if black plays something like, again, bishop e6, you have d4 as well as knight e2 and knight f4, just going after this guy immediately, or building up a full center. It takes a little bit of time to getting used to how to play these positions exactly in the Vienna Gambit, but hopefully... In about, what, what was that, like 12 minutes? Those are all the general ideas and theoretical points. Um, they can decline the gambit, or they can accept, uh, th they can play into the main line of the gambit, which is d5, but hopefully that points you in the right direction. Now, what if they don't play knight f6 on the second move? What if they play knight c6? Well, now I'm going to go for f4 with a little bit of a delay. Now, you can play f4 here. I don't recommend it. This is called the kind of deferred king's gambit, uh, meaning that you you know you play uh, the king's gambit on the third move instead of the second move, but it's a little too dangerous for my liking. Uh, and here you can play like like this and try to trick them back into d4. But the thing is, if black knows the move g5 here, this can be very scary. In many of these positions, you actually have to sacrifice your horse completely, like this, uh, looking for a super gambit. You know, just going for a position where you've sacrificed all the material, but you're just going for a direct assault. If you like this, you can try it, but it can't possibly be my recommendation because it's technically losing for white. But you can try it if you'd like. Uh, if they don't know g5 and instead they go here, well, congrats. Now you're in a Vienna Gambit again. So against this, I'm going to recommend to you bishop c4. 
And first things first, let's look at the copycat variation. So this variation is losing for black if you know the move queen g4, which is a benefit of delaying knight f3, you attack g7. A lot of beginners here will play queen to f6 because it attacks this and, def uh, sorry, it defends this and attacks this. But here comes the magic. Knight to d5. And this attacks f6 and c7. But lets them go here. And they'll get excited. They're going to take this. I've even had a 1400 think this was mate. It's not. So a lot of people freak out here and go, uh-oh, how do I guard this? Um, and how do I guard this? Uh-oh. All right, well, how about g6? And you, this might look really good, but that's not the point. The point is knight to h3, and the queen is trapped. Literally just trapped. It can't go anywhere back. People will run their queen to the free square, and now you play d3, and you glue in the queen, and c3 is coming, and there's nothing black can do to stop this. A lot of black, uh, 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 black players here will play h5, and they will attack your queen. But you don't need to worry about that. If they attack your queen, you can just move your queen. You don't need to rush. They can't go here, right? So now you have pressure here and here, and knight c7, and all of this is still a threat. This is just lost. You can run this through the engine if you like. But if you get this on the board, it's just losing. Uh, Stockfish's best variation here is something like knight h3 followed by h5 immediately. So king f8, knight h3, h5, queen g5, queen d4, d3, and bishop to e7. I can basically guarantee you that you will never get this because I've never gotten this in a game. Uh, and now the best thing to do is queen g3 back, again maintaining this, and black has to play b5. Again, you can check this with the computer, but I can wholeheartedly assure you that you will never, ever, ever face this, okay? You will never face this. And if you do, they're cheating. And if they're not cheating, they're an anonymous grandmaster. And if they're not an anonymous grandmaster, then I don't know, okay? You're playing an alien. But I've never faced this against any grandmaster that I've ever played. People don't know how to play once they fall into this position. Um, now, there's other ways to defend the g7 pawn, like king to f8. If they play this or g6, I recommend sliding back and threatening this. I've had people blunder knight d4 mate. Uh, people will play knight f6 here. And now you should prevent knight to d4 by playing the move knight e2. Then you will play d3 and go for bishop to g5. And your position is much better because they've weakened their dark squares considerably. So I get this, this, they can attack my queen, I'll slide over, and now I will play bishop g5 and queen h4 to try to win material on this side of the board. Of course, if they play king to f8, um, then queen f3 back with the same ideas, knight e2, d3, and so on and so forth. You can choose which way you'd like to castle. Copycat variation is no good. The, con the considerably popular main line is to play knight to f6, this is just the two knights, uh, and here I like d3. Black can play bishop c5 or bishop b4. I've played this against a lot of grandmasters. Black also has the professional move, knight to a5. Here I can just you can just slide back, take, take, and then try to play for a later move, f4. Uh, you can also play queen f3 and uh, try to castle queenside as fast as you can. Just give the bishop, get, get castled as fast as possible. Um, against bishop to b4, I like to reinforce my knight like this and then play castles, f4, f5. But what you're going to face the most is knight f6 and bishop c5. And against this, I will just show you a little cool trappy variation. After f4, again, if they take, take, it's like the Vienna gambit, but they took it, and now we just have a good version of it. So a lot of people will play it like this. Knight f3, and now knight g4. And this looks scary. It looks like you've actually blundered something, but here you just slap them in the face and play knight g5. Now, you're counterattacking, so if they play knight to f2, uh, you have queen h5, and if they play g6, you have bishop takes f7 check, king has to move, um, and I think the, the most winning variation here is check, king back, and queen slides in. And it's losing. They, this is, it's losing. It's losing. And if I wasn't clear, it's lost. So... They can't play like this. They always have to monitor this move. 
So a lot of people here will play castles, thinking that they've, you know, defended their f7 pawn, but now we play the really nice move, f5. And this disconnects the bishop from the defense of the horse, our bishop defends our horse from the queen, and knight f2 is met with queen to h5 and black resigns the game because of unstoppable threats of f7 and h7. So here people have played, for example, h6, and now you play, uh, well, you can play bishop takes f7, but knight f7 is nice, hits the queen, the threat of discovered check, and I've won games like this, takes, takes, uh, king to h8 and f6. Bye-bye. Because after pawn takes f6, bishop comes with checkmate. If queen f6, this is made in one. So a very devastating attack. Uh, and you need not be worried about knight to g4. And if they play bishop to g4, uh, you, there's the, the, the most important move of this entire thing. Knight a4. Okay? This hits the bishop. And you need to defend against the move knight to d4 with the pin. So for example, if knight d4... Here there is um, capture on c5, take, and now you play c3. And the, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to make them take, take, and you have a very solid center, and you'll castle your king this way. So you'll play bishop, queen, and bring the king this way. You're, you, you can castle this way, it's okay, but you need to not worry about the safety of your king. That's why I said this video is good for the advanced player, because if you're 2000 you know the theory here, you're going to be fine, even against master level players. So, I, I think that's basically it. I mean, there's other move orders in e4, e5. You know, you might face something like an early d6. Against that, just go d3 and f4. Just do your thing. Just do your thing. d3 and f4, knight f3 after that, delay knight f3, castle, you'll be in good shape. Um, now, I promised all of you a, a, a statistical review of this opening, right? You guys, uh, you guys who stuck around till, till here or skipped ahead, you know, you're, you're still amazing either way. So I picked um, a guy named Kinda Pink Jake. Uh, Jake is a huge, huge supporter of my channel, originally on Twitch, uh, and he was actually one of my first 200 subscribers here on YouTube, which is insane to think about because I now am nearing 100,000. If you're watching in 2021, let me know how many subscribers I have at that point, or if the channel got deleted. Well, that would not make sense because then you wouldn't be able to watch this video. Anyway. Jake used to play e4, e5. We can see that he's played over a thousand games of e4, e5. 580 of his games went knight f3 with the black pieces. 150 went like this. Knight c3, he only had 82 games out of 1160, which shows you how deep out of the way the Vienna is. So Jake would play both. He's played knight c6 and knight f6. Against knight f6, he has only ever played three Vienna Gambits out of 1,100 games. Now, to his credit, he did win two of them, but he played bad variations. And in fact, he won a game where he accepted, so his opponent didn't know what he was doing. But what about knight c6? Okay, bishop to c4. And Jake here has played 21 games. He did play a lot of two knights. Uh, and how many of this? Okay, about... 11, 11 games out of 1,100 possible games. And look at the score, 86%. Now, I wouldn't be surprised, by the way, if he's played me in a few of these games. Um, but, no, oh, maybe not, because I've played Jake on stream before. But 86% for white in these positions. That's crazy. That is unheard of. So that shows you the potential of this opening, okay? I'm going to just show you one Grandmaster example. Uh, it's actually a guy that I played. Yevgeny Tomashevsky, superstar grandmaster from Russia. Yevgeny Tomashevsky is like over 2,700. He's, you know, top 10 in Russian rankings. So Yevgeny plays E4, C6, but look at his E4, E5 games on chess.com. One ever game against the Vienna. And it was against me, and I played it against him. It was a title Tuesday game. You know, I wasn't winning from the opening. It was a very, very long game. But even at the grandmaster level, this guy saw one Vienna ever, according to his chess.com database. So that should show you the full power and potential of this opening. And if you're looking for a weapon at the beginner level to get people out of their comfort zone as early as the second move, well, then the Vienna is for you. If you're an intermediate player that's played a lot of D4 and wants to switch to E4, this could be a good way to do it. You don't need to learn the Italian. You don't need to learn 
uh, the Spanish. You don't need to learn the Scotch. Play the Vienna. Take a walk through the beautiful streets of Austria. You know, sit back, look at the beautiful museums and concert halls and architecture. Uh, and enjoy your time playing E4, E5 and Knight C3. Now, separate plug, I have an E4 course. If you enjoy my content uh, and you'd like to support me, you should click on the link in the description because it will take you to a very nice website where we've put all of our courses there. You can look at the table of contents and I go into written format on the Vienna and other things that you would face in the King's Pawn. But that's only if you have the financial means to do that and want to support everything that I do. Uh, that's basically it for now. Hope you've made it through the end of this video. And, uh, well, I'll ask you if you have, what's your favorite season of the year? And what do you like to do during your favorite season? Uh, mine is probably the fall. And I just like to take, you know, walks outside or go running when there's, uh, you know, and I can wear a hoodie and I'm not pouring in sweat. All right. Hope this was a good video. And I will see you in the next one.